This video will cover the wrapper design pattern, which is sometimes also called the facade design pattern. A wrapper or a facade is when you create a new class in order to hide how another class or group of classes works. Why would you want to do that? There are two main reasons why you would use a wrapper. The first is if you have a class or a group of classes that are very complex to use. For example, if you want to write the c -sharp code to send out an email, you need to create a mail message object, you might need to create multiple mail address objects, and then you have to create a SMTP client object to actually send out the email. You also need to remember to include two using statements for some namespaces that are rarely used. That's a lot of work just to send out one email. So what you might want to do is create a wrapper class that hides all that complexity. You might also want to use a wrapper if you have a third-party library that gets updated frequently. This way, if a future update changes something significantly, like changes a default value, this way you can go into your wrapper class and have it set the default to the value you want instead of the new value. To demonstrate the wrapper class, I'll show you how you can send an email in c -sharp. Here's the simple version. You create a mail message object with the from address, the to address, your email subject, and your email's body. Then you instantiate an SMTP client object, a mail server, configure it, and send out your email. This isn't too complex, but you do need to create two different objects, and remember to include the system.net and system.net.mail namespaces. But what if you want to send out an email to multiple recipients? If you want to send an email out to multiple recipients, you need to do it a little bit differently. You create the mail message object, then you create a mail address object and assign that to the from property on the mail message. Then for each recipient, whether they're a to, a cc, or a bcc, you need to create a new mail address object with their address and add it to the to, cc, or bcc collection. Then you set your mail message as subject and body, and finally create the SMTP client to send out the email message. Doing it this way, we have 36 lines of code, and we're creating multiple objects. It's getting a little complex here. You could make it a little simpler by inlining the mail address creation, but this is still 26 lines of code. Not exactly the simplest way to do this. So what I've done is I've created a wrapper class called email creator. It has a static method here, create email from, and you pass in the from address. This calls the email creator private constructor, passing in the from address, and sets the from address to the mail message. Then we have two CC and BCC methods that accept string arrays. So we can pass in all of the two CC and BCC addresses with one call to this function. These functions all loop through the past parameters create mail address objects and add them to the appropriate property to cc or bcc. Then we have with subject and with body functions that take the subject and the body of the email message. And finally we have a send function that instantiates the SMTP client, does the configuration, and sends out the email message. This is kind of using a fluent interface. It's not a great fluent interface because it doesn't force any grammar rules. And I'll include a link to a guide that I have for creating a better Fluent interface. But this is good enough for our example. Now that we have this wrapper class, we can send out an email message with just these seven lines. Email creator .create email from the from address. To include a list of two addresses as normal strings. CC, BCC, the same. With subject, with body, and then send. So now we've got seven lines. We don't need to create any objects. We don't need to remember the system.net or system.mail namespace because those are all included here in the email creator wrapper class. And anytime we want to send out an email, we can just make this simple call. Plus we have an added advantage. If the mail message format ever changes the structure of the class, we can go into the email creator, make whatever change we need here, and the rest of our program should still probably work the same. That's something I actually encountered in a program when we switched from the 1.1 framework to the 2.0.NET framework. Microsoft changed the way the mail message handles multiple addresses, and we had a program that was sending out emails. 
So we had to go back in and change everything because we didn't have a wrapper class like this. If you have any questions about the wrapper or facade design pattern or any other design patterns, please leave a comment below. I'll also include a link to the Fluent Interface lesson in the description below in case you want to actually write your own Fluent Interface, which can make some of your library code a lot easier to use.